This is part one of a two-part series on assembling ribs in a body assembly fixture. And this month I'm going to talk about doing the A5 rim assembly and in the next sequence we'll talk about doing the F5 rim assembly. Our body fixtures are made of oak, but you could certainly make one out of particle board or out of plywood. We very precisely cut them to the exact shape of the instrument they're going to hold. And we've attached feet to the bottom, which center the fixture on the rib so that the fixture basically floats in the height of the rib over the table. We have a center section that is outfitted with turnbuckles so we can tighten the center portion against the ribs and push them to the outside of the fixture. Here's a set of our steam bent A model ribs for the A model mandolin. And as you can see, they fit uh, in the shape of the fixture itself. The next uh, job would be to check where the head block and tail block go and how they're going to align to everything. And then we're going to mark the center line where the neck goes so that we can cut that line on the bandsaw in the head block area. We want this cut to be a little bit on the large side. Later on, it's going to be opened up to either a dovetail or V-joint. So we just want to make sure we have plenty of room there to get the block in. Corrections to the shape of a rim can be done by using a hair dryer or a heat gun and applying heat for about 10 or 15 seconds and then pull the part in place, in this case the head block, um, clamp it in place for again about 10 or 15 seconds till it cools. If you need to make minor changes to the sides of the rib in any place you can create a small call from oak or maple and then uh, lightly clamp it in place, leaving enough space to get some air in there. Use the, the heat gun again to apply um, warmth to that area of the rib. Keep the heat gun moving so you don't burn any one part. About 10 or 15 seconds will do it. And then just snug up the clamp and allow the part to cool for about 10 or 15 seconds again. Now we're ready to mark the butt seam so we know where to cut the line where the two pieces of rim come together over the tail block. Once these pieces have been cut, make sure that they fit straight and clean and you'll have a nice clean joint there. And then we're ready to glue them in place. We use uh, either hot hide glue or tight bond according to the, the job we're doing. You'll notice at this point that we're working over newspaper so that uh, we don't have a problem of gluing the rim to the workbench. And we apply a reasonably good amount of glue on the back of the block and then use a Q-tip to uh, smear the glue around, distribute it over the back of the block. Also notice that I'm wearing some nitro gloves here. It keeps the glue off my hands. It allows me to grab a phone if I have to because I can just snap the gloves off and throw them in the trash. They're pretty cheap. We get them from Costco. Putting that block right on the center line and get ready with the clamp so they can squeeze that clamp up and then be able to tighten it securely. We're really looking for some good squeeze out here. That's what's going to be important. It shows us that we have a good mating surface all the way along. Use a Q-tip to do some cleanup. Get rid of some excess glue. And here's that area of squeeze out. We can see that the glue has evenly come up around that whole mating edge there. It's very important. Now we're going to put the spreader back into the fixture. Now notice that we're really working from the back to the front when we glue this together. We clamp the tail block in place first, and then we're going to expand the rim against the fixture so that anything that opens at the head block area is going to be cut open anyway because that's where the neck joint goes. Use a small mallet and tap the rim, make sure it's flush to the bottom of the fixture. Then we'll tighten the clamp again. We use a metal shim in the very front part in front of the head block because the rim is taller and lower than the fixture and we want to make sure the rim doesn't bow out from the fixture so this acts as a as a partition or a wall to keep the rim from bowing out again apply some tight bond to the head block and uh, certainly want to use a little bit more glue than less glue I'd rather it come out on the paper um, or on my gloves or somewhere we can take it off than not have enough and use a q-tip to Distribute it around. Get reasonably even distribution of this glue. By the way, we're using Tight Bond original glue, the red label glue, not Tight Bond with any number. And now let's pull this head block into the space and immediately apply a C clamp. And we want to look for some squeeze out here to make sure that we get a nice, good, uh, 
fit of that head block. Yeah, we're getting some good squeeze around that whole front edge there. This sanding block is uh, a board we've made with a piece of 80 grit sandpaper on the bottom. In the real world, we run it through a thickness sander. It's a little bit more efficient for us. Ideally, the kerf lining should be attached first before uh, the ribs are sanded top and bottom. Well, there you have it. A nicely assembled A-style rib set with a virtually invisible butt seam. You could decorate that with an ebony inset piece or a piece of celluloid binding. Might be nice to match the binding going around the instrument. I do that at the time you glue these together rather than trying to, to cut that seam in there. The, uh, the joints are virtually invisible as far as the glue seams are concerned, which is an indication of a nicely assembled rib set. And the slot in the front, of course, will go away since that's where the neck's going to go. See you at the next one.